Welcome to the History Show here on Uxbridge FM, and it's a warm welcome to John Randall. Hi, John. Hello there. Now, John, you've been uh, kindly agreeing to come on today and tell us about the story of Randall's department store in Uxbridge. And for anyone that doesn't remember Randall's, it was a family-run independent department store based in Vine Street. It closed in 2015, having run for 123 years. So, John, how did Randall's all begin? It was my great-grandfather, who was called Philip Albert Randall, but everybody knew him as Pa, and he um, he basically wanted. He lived out in Wickham Way. The the the, the Randall family was uh, in Wickham and in the Missendons as well, going back. And he decided he wanted to start a furniture factory in West Wickham, and he went round some of his uh, relations. I think they were mainly farmers, and gathered a, enough capital to uh, purchase a an upholstery firm in West Wickham. And he was uh, supplying various uh, uh, shops and outlets. And one of them was a shop in Uxbridge called Carbots. And Carbots, which was in Vine Street, said that uh, he was going to sell because of ill health. And so Pa decided to um, uh, purchase that. And uh, one of those sort of early direct from the manufacturer to the public. Um, So in 1888, he purchased Carbots, and it remained Carbots until 1891, where the name was changed to Randall Brothers, because there were two brothers, Philip and William. And interestingly, um, that was in a, a, a premises, which was, if you like, three ago. There have been three three buildings which has housed the store over the century. Um, And that one lasted for a a while, and a new one was built, I think, around about the 1905-1910 period. But it was very much a a, a sort of pots and pans and so on and so forth, as well as the furniture. Furniture has always been uh, a a mainstay of, of the store. I guess it, the, the, it expanded into other things as well, clothing and um, other well, stuff. Yeah, yeah, clothing never really, clothing actually came in at the very end when I was in charge, and it was actually another family business closed in Uxbridge Pearson's, which was on the high street, and uh, it was a gentleman's outfitters. So uh, I decided, let's see what, ha- well, let's add that in. It was very much in our style. It was um, slightly, well, I would call it classic, Less kind people might call it old-fashioned, um, but that um, but that fitted in. But otherwise, it was curtains, carpets, glass, china. I've got an old uh, I've got an old cinema advert that we had done that I found in my uh, well, it was, by then it was my father's office, but it was done in the I think at the end of the twenties, uh, which uh, uh, shows the previous store and shows how it was laid out. It's actually quite fascinating with one of those very, very stilted, received English um, commentaries over it, you know, sort of, Randall's has got some really fine items you'd love to see. (laughs) And they obviously didn't do much editing because as the vans came out, uh, they nearly knocked a cyclist over. (laughs) Um, But um, we then got, I don't know when, but we also got into removals. And that was quite early because I can remember my father telling me how we we actually did a removal of a, 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 a family all the way to Dartmoor or somewhere around there. And it took several days and they had a sort of caterpillar type uh, truck that pulled all the stuff down. So that was that was always a feature, the removals. Um, uh, we also had a depository in Lawn Road. And I can remember as a boy... Um, we had a, a lot of trade from the RAF where people were being posted abroad, Singapore, Hong Kong, uh, so forth, and they'd put their furniture and goods into storage while they're away. And then um, I get I get rather excited as a small boy opening the post with my dad because we'd get stamps in from these places, which were much treasured. And um, they were, then we'd have the goods ready for them on their return, where they came into accommodation in RAF Uxbridge. Uh-huh. And of course, this is pre-Civic Centre. This is pre, um, 
the, or the cricket club was still there, and also, of course, Vine Street Station. So probably there'd have been a lot more footfall in that street compared to uh, more recent times. Yeah, um, obviously Vine Street Station going down to West Strait on the branch line via Cowley, uh, where I still live, um, uh, was important. Uh, the Civic Centre actually probably increased some trade, but of course it was it was a the, the, the borough was based around the corner, but Cricket Field Road, uh, I was called that because, as you say, there was a cricket ground there. Um, so it, the, the whole nature of Uxbridge was uh, was a lot different in those days. There were lots of family businesses uh, around. Uh, we had down Vine Street, we had Buckley and Taylors, the um, the uh, sort of electrical shop, and there was Cheney's, and there was Kirby's, and uh, lots of others. So it it wasn't unusual. And those suitors, of course, another big department, or bigger than ours. Um, and that was uh, that was also family owned. Mm. Now the current uh, frontage um, that's been remain that's been kept for this uh, development. When when was that built? The the last last door design, the Art Deco frontage. Right. Well, that was actually designed, if you like. The architects drew up all the plans in uh, the late 20s, 1929-ish. But then, of course, the Great Depression happened, so they put off building it. And the new store was opened in 1938 or 39, big fanfare, um, thinking that there were better times. Of course, as we know, the Second World War was about to erupt around the world. Uh, so maybe it wasn't such good timing, but that's where it, that, so it, its design is 10 years earlier, very much Art Deco, rather than the when it was actually put up in 38, 39. Mm. Did it have any bomb damage in the war? Yes, it did. Um, Vine Street itself had, a, I believe, a direct hit on what was opposite, which was the cinema at that stage, and I think there were a few fatalities. Um, but we had a, a landmine in the yard, which uh, blew out all the windows, um, and also uh, it also go, gave rise to a, a, a thing where my, I presume my grandfather, my dad was uh, out, out fighting in the uh, in North Africa and Italy. Um, we put an advert out, apparently blocking things out, sort of basically saying, despite bomb damage, uh, we will be open for business. But the censors, even though we'd blocked it out, took took a dislike to this and gave us a warning. Somewhere I've got the paperwork that said, you know, don't do this again. You're giving succor to the enemy. Um, I recounted this story somewhere, and somebody on the Wikipedia page has said that we were helping the Nazi cause, which I think is probably pushing it a little far. But, uh, well, not possibly, completely. But it just goes to show you how things can be misconstrued. But that that was the reason for it. It was actually trying to to uh, say how um, uh, how we were still going to be open for business. Also, I also have a, somewhere a, 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 uh, there's a magazine that the uh, air raid wardens, of which both my grandfathers were in, um, and it described how this, this chap, it wasn't one of the family wrote this, uh, walked down uh, Uxbridge High Street after this bombing raid, and it was all uh, quite alarming. But he said one of the proudest moments was when he saw the Union flag still fluttering bravely over Randall's store, which always gives me a little bit of a lump in the throat, to be honest. <laughs> oh, lovely. <laughs> now, one of the things that I've been finding when I've been researching this is that lots of stories pop up of amazing customer service from the shop. Perhaps you don't get that so much these days. Was that a feature of, uh, of the store, do you think? I think we always put that at the foremost of of, of our um, of, of what we offered, particularly in latter days, because I think in 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 times gone past it was expected that every store would have those levels of service, but gradually things changed. We tried to maintain that, and I think to a great extent we did. Unfortunately, um, what we were finding towards the end was where people. Uh, wanted the service but they'd found it cheaper online and then wanted to have the same service from us but at the same price they got from a, a, a rather anonymous online source 
Um, I always thought of things like furniture uh, and uh, even menswear, where you want to try the things on uh, or sit down on them or see them in reality would hold us uh, in, in good stead. But I, actually, I, I started becoming, I started realizing that a whole new generation of people came along who actually were not used to the old levels of customer service where somebody would actually advise you on what to buy. People were doing it online. They were checking reviews. They were talking to their friends and recommendations. So in a way, that model that model was actually dying out, which is a great shame. Um, but there we are. That's a fact of life. And I think that's what we're probably seeing in, in retail in, in most areas of the country, notwithstanding even the devastating uh, effects of coronavirus. Mm. I can only think really locally of two uh, independent department stores. You've got John John Saunders in Ryslip and maybe Daniels in, in Windsor um, that still survive. I can't think of any others in the local area. I don't know if you can. No, I think in the local area they're, they're becoming uh, – I mean, we were part of, we were part of a, a something called the Association of Independent Stores, which was uh, countrywide. And there certainly were a lot more people like Bentles, um, oh, I, but around the country. But there's a few. If you go up into more rural areas, uh, there's a few uh, still remaining. But it is it, it is very difficult. And of course, the other thing uh, that always is a problem for family businesses is actually passing down the generations. So actually, I was the third generation. But what actually happened was that, uh, so it went from my grandfather, uh, great grandfather, so I was the fourth generation, my great grandfather had one son, my grandfather. He had two sons, my father and my uncle. And uh, then uh, I was the only one coming into the store. I had a brother. So actually, what very often used to, well, probably still happens is families sort of want one family might one part of the family want to keep the thing going other ones would cash in if you like sell it off or they come in and want to run it and so forth i was very lucky because i was the the only person running it although when times are tough you've got the whole responsibility but it did mean that i i had a, a great deal of um, independence about how i i could take it forward mm. how did you manage to um time your day between being an MP and running a department store that must have been quite crazy at the time well um, basically uh, every uh, I was going into Parliament uh, Monday to Thursday uh, coming back quite late we were still doing quite late sittings as well uh, but I would have the sales figures and the cash takings or the, 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 the um, sent to me by fax <laughs> every day. Um, on a Friday, if there wasn't a parliamentary sitting day, um, and I very, I would have my surgeries, my advice surgeries in the civic centre, so I'd try and go in on Friday afternoon, and a lot of Saturdays I'd go into the shop. And actually, I've always reckoned that that kept my feet firmly on the ground because not only actually you're doing something that makes you very much understanding what people are thinking and just chatting to lots of people, whether it's delivery drivers bringing goods in or the staff or customers, you've got much more of a feeling of um, what people's moods were on various uh, subjects or, or whatever. Um, so it was quite hard. My, my wife, who, who is an absolute saint because she's actually a teacher, and I asked her to come into the, uh, the business to, to help keep an eye on it, and um, I'm not sure she thoroughly enjoyed retail, especially the administration of it, uh, but she did. So we managed to keep it going. I was very keen. that I didn't want people to think that uh, I'd gone off to something else and that was it and I was going to, to leave it to uh, wither on the vine, as it were. It was, it was a, a great deal of pressure. And in fact, when I, um, I stood down from Parliament in 2015, my idea was uh, we, we, we'd made the decision, the family had made the decision, we were going to uh, sell it off. Retail was getting very, very difficult. Uh, and the upkeep of the building, it's a grade two listed building. So uh, it was quite difficult. Um, and uh, I, I thought I would um, probably have to spend a year or two uh, dis disposing of it and seeing what happened. But as it happens, the, 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 the disposal came along pretty quickly. Mm. Now tell us about some um, 
stories about the shop. I mean, I know it was used for filming a number of times. Can you recall um, episodes of filming going on there? Yeah, there's, there's, there's quite a lot. Um, one I can remember pretty well because I was actually at that stage, I think I was helping out with fools and horses coming in. Uh, they spent a day there and it was quite interesting watching them. They, um, David Jason uh, was in, in character almost from the, de- from the moment he walked through the doors and um, uh, they were actually thinking up new gags, if you like, as they were coming along. So they were saying, well, can we purchase some uh, some tablecloths so we can run into them or something? So I was just sitting there with a with a, with a yeah, with a cash book, just saying, yes, that's it. And somebody else was then uh, totting it up. So it was quite good business as well as quite a bit of fun. Um, <laughs> latterly, uh, we also had, I think they were there for quite a few days, Endeavour being filmed, um, which was quite interesting. Uh, uh, one thing that amused me about that was that they had done one of our windows up to look like the early 60s, including a, a section with lingerie in, because that was part of the plot. I'm not going, as it's always on repeat, I won't give any spoilers. But I did overhear uh, one customer saying, no wonder why they're not busy, look how old-fashioned it is. Um, I also caught one gentleman staring rather intently at the uh, the merchandise for sale and his wife pulling him along, which was also quite interesting as, um, <laughs> as, a, as an observation online. The other thing that I found fascinating was that the people who were doing the... They, they were pretty accurate on trying to get uh, stuff um, uh, to look like the, the, the era, but they didn't quite realise how to price up in pre-decimal uh, figures. So uh, I did point out. I mean, it, 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 they're so finickety they are because you wouldn't see that in the in the um, actually in the broadcast. But they were very keen and they changed it all. So that was one. We also very briefly, I think, after we'd actually, uh, in fact, yeah, it was it, it, after we'd actually left. Um, I've seen it in Grantchester, and there's a film about the life of A. A. Milne. Where the where uh, that bit of Vine Street and the front of Randalls was turned into an a, 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 I think it's either New York or Boston, briefly, where lots of people were queuing up out outside to get the first edition or a, a Winnie the Pooh um, uh, teddy bear or something. But that, so it, it crops up from time to time. But it's gone back a long way with these things. Mm. Um, it's it's really probably because of our proximity to a lot of the filming studios. And there's one, I don't know whether you ever came across a series of probably not very politically correct films these days, or the Doctor series, Doctor at Large, Doctor in Love, etc., etc. And in one of those, um, I saw that we'd obviously lent a uh, Randall's van to be filmed, so that as the person, the Doctor, moves in, I think he's going to Beaconsfield, actually, where they did the location. But there's a Randall's van in prominent position. So, um, yeah, I, I, I quite like it that it's immortalised, if you like, in some of these old films. Yeah. Well, thanks, John. I mean, um, we look forward to the, um, the change that's going on on the on the property at the moment, um, all being finished. And um, I've seen some some nice... CGI'd uh, images of retail and restaurants downstairs and flats upstairs. At some point, I guess that will be finished. Um, but yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I'm, I, I, I must admit, the it was quite a difficult decision. Obviously, with all the history, and and I, I spent my, you know, I used to say, and it's true, uh, I I would go in there as a boy on my way to dad would take us in there, open the post do the telephones and everything else before we went up to school in Hillingdon. And um, so I've been, I've been, a shop was part of my life. But because it was listed and because the, uh, when we looked at the um, the bids, they were going to keep the facade, in fact, improve the facade. They had to keep quite a lot out the back as well because of the listing. I just look at it as another chapter in that building, another chapter in the history of Randalls in Uxbridge, and I think it's quite an exciting development. So I'm, I'm actually looking forward to seeing it in, 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 in actually in operation. Yeah. Well, thanks, John. I'll let you go. I know you've got uh, lots you of on. parliamentary duties to attend to. But um, thanks very much. And hopefully we'll see you again here on uh, Uxbridge FM at some point. Always happy to talk about Uxbridge.